Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for taking some time here on a Marquette game day. I want to open up by just saying thank you to Bill Scholl, um, to Mike Lovell, and to Mike Broker for accommodating us today and letting us do this. It's kind of cool, kind of a cool story for Doc to be here today and do this. Uh, thanks to Jimmy and Dee Haslam, Wes Edens, Jamie Dinan for their support and kind of unwavering commit to winning, commitment to winning. It's been incredible uh, to kind of go through this with them in this process. Uh, Peter Fagan, his partnership has just been incredible as well. This has been a difficult couple of days, but a great couple of days. Uh, we uh, talked a few days ago about identifying a coach that could lead and maximize uh, this team's talent in, in a window where we have a real chance to compete. And, you know, we found Doc, we talked to Doc, we went at it with urgency as we talked about, and it's my honor today to be here and sit with Doc and introduce him as the next head coach in the Milwaukee Bucks. Doc Rivers. Well, hello, Milwaukee. You know, um, it's great to be back. You know, it, it took me a while. Uh, we'll say that. And, um, but for, for me, in, in short, uh, I'll let you guys ask the questions about the team and stuff. Just personally for me, uh, being back here is, is a dream. Uh, you know, I think about uh, Rick and Al and, and Hank. Um, this is where I learned really most of my basketball knowledge, you know, I, I came from three geniuses. I really did. I mean, they, uh, they taught me basketball. They taught me life. Um, you know, Rick taught me all the restaurants, uh, in every city. Um, so it's just really cool, you know, uh, being in a arena, like coaching in the arena and, and your jerseys hanging above you. Um, I can turn to the players and say, guys, I swear to God, I play basketball. <laughs> Just look up. I swear that's me. You know, so it's really cool. But I'd like to open up to whatever you guys have. Hey, John. First off, congratulations, Doc. Congratulations to you as well. Uh, first, we know that you've coached great teams throughout your career. How have you seen this team perform? Um, and what do you think that you need to do in order to maximize its potential? Um, and by the way, I'm Melanie Ricks. I'm the team sideline and digital reporter. It's nice to meet you. Well, nice meeting you. Um, you know, listen, I don't know yet. Um, I, I just know who they are as far as, you know, you, you see the talent. Obviously, I've, I've coached against the talent. Um, you know, um, so, you know, looking from afar, um, you think we got to connect this, you know, we know they all can play, uh, but we got to figure out is the best way for them all to play together and all to be great in what they do. Uh, Jim Ozarski, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Hey, Welcome back, Doc. Uh, John, quickly for you, um, as you said, you wanted to act decisively with urgency. So what's the, the timeline here on identifying Doc, then starting that process to, to get to this point? Yeah, I think we talked a little bit about it the other day, but when we decided uh, with ownership and Peter and myself to make a decision, part of that decision um, was to try to identify a small group of coaches that we thought would fit the bill and to really really try to test how much confidence and we would have in executing that. And, and really, that's what led to the decision. And really quickly afterwards, we identified Doc and targeted Doc, and it's been kind of a quick process um, after that, but we're glad that we got him. Uh, yeah, and for me, it was just a, a strange day because um, I was flying to Dallas. Uh, I was going to do the ESPN game on that Wednesday, and I flew up early because uh, I wanted to, you know, spend time with my daughter <laughs> who lives there, and, and Seth, my son-in-law, plays for the Mavs. And I'm terrible with my phone. You'll find that out. Uh, I have my phone off, and I walk in my daughter's house, and she's asking me about the news. I'm thinking that, some political news that happened, you know, and then she told me, and then I turned my phone on to a, <laughs> a lot of messages. <laughs> urgent, that, urgent uh, messages. Urgent messages that I hadn't answered. So uh, it was a strange day. Um, for you, Doc, uh, this is probably what, this is, I think, one of the few things you haven't experienced in terms of taking over a team yeah. midseason with this expectation. So what's your sort of immediate plan to – jump in like this to get this team where it yeah, needs to go. Yeah, listen, I've never done this. Uh, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. I, I can tell you that just from the day and a half. Uh, but it's going to be a challenge. It's, it's a challenge that, that I'm running towards. 
Um, Got to get organized quickly, you know. Um, can't try to do too much too soon. We're in the middle of a season, so we got to try to keep our rhythm. Um, there are changes that, that, that we have to make. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, and uh, we'll start working on it immediately. You know, it's, it's interesting. I looked at our calendar, you know. Um, I should have waited until after All-Star break. You know, this is a tough stretch, uh, but that's good too. Like I always say, good. I don't ever say bad. I always, I do. Uh, you know, Rex back there. First thing, did you see the teams we're playing? And I said, good. Let's bring it on. Let's let's get it on. We win them all. Great. We struggle. Great. Doesn't matter. Our our goal is to be great by the end of the year. And uh, but the biggest part of the schedule is the probably three or four practice days left for the season, like good days. So we're going to have to use shoot arounds. We're going to have to do things a little different. Uh, Eric Name, The Athletic. Welcome back, Doc. Um, Thank you. I, I guess just for you, um, uh, I'm assuming you were enjoying not coaching, the grind of not having that. What made this attractive enough for you to come back to coaching? Yeah, I mean, listen, um, what's today, Saturday? I think so. Saturday, um, 10, 20, I would probably be on the third hole at Riviera or Bel Air, and it was good. Uh, but I'm a coach. I love coaching. Um, I will say I wasn't going to coach, though, ever, unless the right – I wasn't just going to take a job. Um, I have been contacted several times this season, um, and I wouldn't even take the call. So I was dead serious that if the right opportunity opened – I would listen. If not, I was fine. And I love coaching. Um, so TV was amazing. Listen, I got to work with Mike Breen and Doris. And Mike is not only one of the best to ever do it, he's also one of my best friends uh, for 20 years. So uh, that was a dream as well. Um, obviously, with this team, you have a two-time MVP in Yasta Kumbo. You have one of the 75 greatest players of all time in Dame Lillard. Um, how exciting is to is it to coach two talents like that? But also, uh, you've coached star pairings before. Yeah. How difficult can that be? It, it you know, listen. It, it, it depends on all of us. I was going to say just it depends on them, but it's not. It's all of us. Um, we the the key is to get them both playing at their ultimate level and making it so they can do that together. That's going to be the key, um, and not just offensively but defensively. You know, as, as a group. Um, and that can be done. That will be done. Just being around them, I was around the uh, the facility yesterday. They're all willing. Um, they just need to figure out how. Doc Jamal Collier from ESPN. Congratulations. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, just you know, it struck me that this was you know this these last couple of months were probably your longest time away from coaching since yeah, other than uh, the lockout or a lockout. Yeah. 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 Just kind of how that time away. What what do you think that that uh, did for you, rejuvenated you? Like, how, how would you say it, that? It was that needed. Time? You know, it's funny. A lot of the veteran coaches, Pop, and guys who I talked to a lot, um, I think at the time um, before I left Philly, uh, Pop and I had the longest run as far as, what, 23 straight years. Pop's 27 straight or 28 straight years uh, of training camps, you know. And um, he called me and asked me, well, what does it feel like? You know, <laughs> and it was strange. And I, I think I was in Paris <laughs> when he called. And I told him, well, that's how it feels like, you know. But um, it was needed, uh, I guess. You know, I don't know. Um, you love what you do. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, coaching is a stressful job, right? It's all the stuff that everybody says. But is it stressful if you love it? You know, that's the way I look at it. Like, I, I love what I do. I, I love this job. I love when it's hard. You know, so, yeah, you did miss that part. Um, it felt like I was on an extended vacation. Uh, and then there just had been some reporting about you sort of serving as, like, almost an informal consultant or sort yeah. of helping out with the Bucks that, and That's Nitro. not true. I don't know where that came from, actually. Uh, I was never a consultant. If I was, I'd need to get paid some more money uh, <laughs> for that because I, did, I didn't get a check. Uh, but Adrian and I are good friends. Um, I've talked to Adrian the last three days. Um, you know, I talked to him the night of the firing. I talked to him. We talk a lot. So, uh, listen, I wanted him to do well. 
Um, I, I look at him as a guy that is a lifer, and he's here for 15 years trying to get a job, and then he gets a job, and it doesn't work out for him. Um, and, you know, this league, in a lot of ways, can be fair and not fair. That's for everybody else to judge. Um, I just know him as a human, and he's a terrific dude. Hey, Doc. Uh, Jack Money from CBS Sports. Congratulations. Um, last night when we were talking to some of the players, Pat Connaughton mentioned that your kind of initial message was that teams need to be more afraid to play you guys. I just says, how do you want to go about making that happen? Well, I just think we have to find our identity. Um, that's is more the message. Like, um, you know, if you're going to have fear of the deer, you got to fear the deer. <laughs> you know you, you know what I mean? Like, um, but our identity uh, right now, you know, and I asked them, like, who are we? And, you, you know, you know when the team is connected and they got it, they'll give you the answer. You know, we don't have an answer yet. And, and we got to find, like, what are we, who are we? Every year you're on a new journey. You know, uh, we have five guys here, I think it's five, that have won a title, I mean, the players, right? And, and so – we have to make sure they understand that um, we want to do a lot of what they did, but you can't go on the same journey. Every year, the journey's different. Even if the same guys came back with the same coach and everything, that journey's different. And, and so we have to figure out uh, who we're going to be and, and, and the type of journey that we need to go on to get what we want. And then obviously you're extremely experienced. All the players mentioned that. I just, what do you kind of take from your previous stops that you think you can bring in here? Gosh, man, I've been through everything. I, I really have uh, as a coach. That's what's so great about coaching. There's a lot of highs, there's lows, and, and you work through them. Um, and you learn from them always. Um, I, at the end of the day, this is a relationship business. And, and um, you know, you, you, the, your job as a coach is to get some of the guys to do some of the things they don't want to do. Um, and you're not going to be popular all the time, and that's fine. You have to accept that uh, when we accept the leadership role. That's just part of it. Um, but if you can get the buy-in and get everybody to buy in and be on the same page, then you can have some success. Steve McGargy, Associated Press. Congratulations. I was just wondering, the defense, it's been, much has been made this season about the drop-off in the Bucks defense compared to previous years. When you saw them from afar, how good a defense can this team have, and what do you think has kind of been missing in that side of the ball? You know, I, I've, I've not been in long enough. Uh, you're correct about the defense. I will say that. Um, I, I sat in the stands last night, and I saw some of it. Um, but it's here. Um, I think we have to get on the right page, the same page, um, we, 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 our language and our, our communication defensively, um, we have to get that right. Um, I think right now you can feel it, you know, some this way, some this way. Some, we got to get on the same page. Um, we got to do things differently, too, than the past. You know, uh, Drew and Dame are different players. Um, so we have, to, we have to change some things for sure. And just to confirm, your debut will, here will be at Denver. Will be your first. Yeah, coach. I know that's smart, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, coach Gabe Stoltz, BrewHoop.com. Obviously, you see Dame, Giannis, Chris highlighting the way for the Bucks, but there's some young talent on the team too. Marjan, Andre Jackson Jr. Just how do you envision um, developing that young talent on the roster? You asking me or John? Me? <laughs> I don't know yet. You know, um, I can't wait to get in the gym with them. That's the guys that I can spend time with because you know they don't have they're not high minute guys yet. Uh, but one of those guys is going to have to help us. Is the way I look at it from afar. You know, you may get in the gym and that changes. But right now, I look at uh, our young guys and um, I always one of these guys. Then maybe two, but one for sure will, will at some point have to help us. And that's our job as a staff to develop them. And it's not just develop them individually. It's more team development, to develop them to learn how to play with a veteran team. And people don't realize how hard that is for young guys. Every guy that comes out of college is the guy on their team. 
and now you join this team and you have Giannis and Dame and Chris Milton, um, you're not the guy on this team. And, and, and learning how to play in that role and being successful is stre- extremely hard. Uh, but I really believe by the end of the year, one of those guys will definitely be able to help us. Doc, over here, Stephen Watson from Valley Sports, Wisconsin. First, if you didn't know, great golf here in Wisconsin. I do know, yes, yeah. yes. Not in December, but anyway. <laughs> you had mentioned receiving phone calls on the golf course from other teams, and you didn't yeah. answer them. Why did you answer this call? Because, I mean, come on, you know the answer. Uh, Giannis, Dame, really, that's the answer. Like, they, you look at their team, you know, I don't ever know the list, right? What is it, eight teams that have a legitimate shot? Um, and I don't know if it's that high, but the Bucks are one of them, right? Um, the other thing is they're, they're built the way they're built with the veterans um, and their grown-ups. Um, I thought that if you're going to jump into this at this time of the year, this would be the type of group that you have the best opportunity to connect and change the quickest. Um, and so that's why I took the job, or took the call. Lance Allen, WTM, JTV. Doc, well, you in the back. Yep. Good to see you. Um, I want to go back to what you said right at the beginning, you know, being here is a dream. Rick, Hank, Al, all the legacy stuff, yeah. the jersey, all that stuff. You had a pretty famous shot just down the street yeah. in 81. What does this city, what does this opportunity mean to you with, and because your name's come up before for this yeah. thing, but what, is it, what does it mean personally to you, this city and this oh, whole thing? You just, it's hard to uh, express emotionally. Um, you know, I, and from afar, and I've told John this, this is one of the places that I've, uh, I've always had circled um, in my life if I could ever, you know, play here. I actually uh, was pissed at Nelson, Don Nelson, for years because uh, I thought he was going to draft me. I think he drafted Randy Brewer. And I'm just still pissed by that. Uh, it was the right choice at the time, I guess. Um, you know, so I never had the opportunity to play here. And then when I started coaching, I'm, yeah, just this is, you know, listen, I, I'm not here if I don't go to Marquette, bottom line. I really believe that. Not only just the, uh, like Rick Hank and Al, but the, the professors. Um, I wasn't the greatest student when I came to Marquette, but I left. A hell of a student. That was not my plan. I, I wanted to skate, and uh, it was not allowed, and it changed my life. So uh, coming back here to a place that changed me as a literal person is, is a dream. Hey, Doc. Um, a little bit on Marquette there. I know you and Shaga have a relationship. Right. I don't know if you've talked with him throughout this week. Um, just if you have, how have those conversations gone? How, how cool is it to be? Oh, Less than cool. a mile down the road from him. I've known Shaka a long time. Um, Shaka recruited my son Austin um, and had him. Uh, Shaka was at the University of Florida. Uh, and Austin was going to commit it to Florida. Um, and then Shaka left and Austin left. He ended up going to Duke. So uh, we've had a very close relationship from way back then. Uh, we've talked several times. Uh, when, when Shaka, uh, I, other than John and and ownership, I think Shaka may have been the first call, like uh, the, the sarcastic get off the golf course, time to get back to real work uh, conversation uh, was from Shaka. Um, Doc, uh, real quick, um, can you confirm, are you th- here through 26, 27? Is, was that accurate? I don't even know all years. We don't, we don't comment yeah. on contracts. In, in oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. I don't even know the answer to that, yeah. <laughs> I just signed for a while. <laughs> you, um, yeah. you referenced uh, a gentleman earlier. Do you have? Can you speak to any new assistants? And w- yeah, what are you doing? Uh, two of them are back there. Uh, Rex and, and Dave uh, uh, will definitely be joining the staff. Uh, I don't know in in what roles yet. Um, this is different. You know, obviously, I've talked to about seven coaches already who have done this. Uh, some really good coaches who have actually done exactly this already. And every one of them had, a, I was hoping they would be the same thing. And that didn't go well, because each one had a whole different story about how it went. Um, but the toughest part is that this is a human business. And we have a lot of coaches who are here already. And so you evaluate everybody. You do. You don't come in with a set idea. 
um, I, I guess I'll find some new friends and learn some stuff too, you know. And so I, I'm going to open this with an open idea. I mean, obviously we're going to make changes. We have to um, because I have to be comfortable. But at the end of the day, you, you just you evaluate. Uh, John, I know it's been a stressful couple of days, but I guess just to see Doc up here and know that he's going to be leading the team, just what kind of confidence do you have going forward and how excited are you to have a coach of Doc's experience doing this job? Yeah, I mean, just absolute excitement and confidence. I think um, we talked about an opportunity to get better and that the, what we've done was way more about that than anything else. And to be able to go after someone like Doc and ultimately be sitting here with him right now, knowing what we want to do, not only this year, next year, the year after, these are special opportunities. It's a great roster, high character people. Now we have a really experienced, high character, brilliant basketball coach who's been in these moments and lived through these moments. It's not my job to coach. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to do everything I can to give him the best resources on and off the floor. But he knows what he's doing. He's going to lead us to where we need to be. Uh, and then, Doc, I guess for you, what have you learned about expectations over the course of your career and, and, and what that means to a team, how it affects a team? And, yeah, and you know, you I've, I've learned that you would rather have them than not. Uh, I've coached a team with no expectations, and that's not very fun. I can, I can tell you that. Um, and I've coached teams. You know, I, I think of myself at times I've, I've created un, unreal expectations, uh, unrealistic expectations with teams. And. Um, you know, I go back to Philly the first year. We had lost the year before. We were swept. And then we went east in the regular season. Um, I don't know if we were that good. We Staff-wise, we kind of knew that going in, but we had a shot at it. So um, that's part of your job is to, to build expectations. Uh, I learned that early on as a coach. It was interesting when I, I took the Boston job. I got a lot of calls from coaches to tell me not to take the job. The expectations would be too unrealistic. And I'm like, what? That's, a, that's ridiculous. You want to that, and you, you want expectations. And this team has them. You know, listen, um, knowing, uh, and I'm going to use one line from a coach that I know well is Bill Belichick. Uh, if you can coach a team where the expectations are, if you land the plane and you get off the plane and there's a parade, but if you don't land it, it's a crash then you got the right team. And that's the way I look at it. Uh, Coach Dario Melendez, WISN 12. Uh, you mentioned you talked to seven coaches that have been in this position. Who were some of those coaches? I don't, I don't remember. Uh, what was yeah. the advice they gave you? Uh, take your time. Um, evaluate staff, um, you know, slowly, even though early on you'll have too many coaches. Evaluate all of them. You'll find a diamond. That's that's one I would say that a lot of them is that you're going to find someone that you never thought can really be an asset to you, and, and and then that guy will become part of your 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 legacy and your coaching, um, and over communicate, and then the best I think, and I already kind of knew this, is take your time with. You can't, you know, Dave and I were going over offense today, and we had a thousand things on the paper. And I said, okay, we can only do one of these. You know, you just, you, you got you to gotta keep them playing. And we can't get them playing in their head. So that's, that'll be the difficult part. Hey, Coach, Stephen Watson asked you before, uh, what was it about this opportunity that made it the right one for yeah. you? You said Giannis and Dame. Um, so I'm curious, what have your conversations been like with them up to this point? Yeah, not a lot, uh, really. I talked a little bit yesterday. Uh, I showed Giannis something that, um, that we hated that he did when we coached against him. And um, and he hadn't done it a lot this year. And I was asking him, you know, about that. And he was laughing. He thought it was funny. I didn't think it was very funny. Um, uh, but um, so we talked about that a little bit. It's funny. tried a little bit of it yesterday. He, he had some success. Um, and then Dame, I've known a little bit from his shooting coach. Uh, we hired a shooting coach two years ago in Philly. We're not going to say that we may have been thinking about something else, but we're just going to stop there. Um, and I got to know Dame through him, but never personally. And so we had a pretty good talk yesterday as well. And then what is it about this organization that felt like the right fit for you? First class. Um, you know, that's one of the things that was a driver. The culture here, uh, I, my last two jobs, I will say, I've had to come in and change the culture of the organization. You know, try to change things. I mean, I, I took 
a, cl a clipper job with Donald Sterling as the owner. Um, and I thought that was a great idea when I did it because uh, I thought I can come in and create change. And I realized early on, I said, this is going to be a little harder than, than I anticipated. And then uh, when Elton hired me with Philly, the first thing he said is, we want you to come in here and, and change our culture, make this a first-class group. And Elton allowed me to do that for the most part. And then Darryl uh, aided in that as well. So this place, and I told John, is they, they have it. And it's going to be great because I, I can coach. And um, that, that'll be fantastic. And, Doc, you kind of obviously mentioned that you were good at home. Like, you know, it was, had to be the right job. But do you feel like – I was bored. <laughs> you know, I am not kidding. I was bored. Um, I would call coaches. You know, it's I can't even tell you some of the conversations. But I would call coaches just to screw with them, you know, um, and talk. But, yeah, I, I love basketball. I've only done it my whole life, um, either as a player or a coach. It's not like I've done a lot of other things in my life, you know. Um so, yeah, uh, continue to, to that, do, do you feel like you still have something to prove? I don't know if I have anything to prove except for I want to win. Uh, you know, um, I, I like winning. I, I like putting myself in those situations, and I've, I've, I've failed, and I've won. Um, man, I, t I tell you, um, winning is, you know, it's something that you, you can't produce. Like, you can't. The, winning it all, it's you know, you it's like having a blood transfusion with everybody in a group in an organization. And and um once you get that in you, you want another one. Um, and that's my pursuit. So I don't know if it's anything to prove there, it's just something that I want to do. Um listen, Giannis, uh, that's what he wants to do. Chris Middleton and, and, and Lopez, just because they've one one doesn't mean they don't want to win another. And Dame wants to win one. So, yeah, I got a hungry group.